Okay, so let's talk about this dry heat in Arizona. I'm Amy Johnson, and I'll give you an insider's view to Phoenix weather. You may have heard Phoenix referred to as the Valley of the Sun. Well, it's true. Phoenix gets 300 days of sun and glorious blue skies per year. That means we have some really hot days. So I like to break the year up into perfect weather, which I consider about October through May, better than average slash iffy weather, which is the front and end of that. So June and September, and then you have three months that are just, you want to go on vacation during those months. And that would be July, August, and September. Okay, so let's break this down a little bit. The perfect months, starting in October. Guaranteed Halloween is always amazing. First, your kids are gonna be able to wear those cute little costumes made of nothing but uh, I don't even know what they're made out of these days. Um, but when I was growing up, I had long johns on under my costume and a parka over my costume, which brought me to tears on multiple years of Halloween. Not the case here. Your kids are gonna be able to wear those great costumes. You're gonna be able to sit around a little, uh, you know, fire pit, having um, something warm while they're running around collecting their candy. It's optimal, believe me. So October is great. It moves on into November where you've got Thanksgiving. It's the classic, let's throw the football around. And if you have relatives that come from the Midwest, they're gonna be in your pool, even though it's freezing to you. Um, and then you move into Christmas and it's usually always glorious. Although we do start getting some rain towards the end of December. January, it's the same thing. There's rain scattered here or there and maybe a little bit into February. But I'm telling you, it's, amazing. Um, and then March, April, May are just glorious. You're going to plant your garden in mid-February and you're going to be eating all kinds of yummy things out of it before it gets too hot. So then the next better than average or iffy months are June and September. I say that because when you're lucky, those months are manageable and when you're not, they can be hot. Um, as a matter of fact, the hottest recorded day in Arizona, Phoenix history really, is June 26, 1990 with a temperature of 122. So June can definitely get hot, but it usually comes back down. And the other great thing about June and September is that the nights start to cool down. So even if the temperature during the day gets up to 102, when you wake up, it's still in the low 70s or even 60s, and so it feels amazing, and it's really just that little bit in the afternoon when it hits the high and actually gets really hot. So those two months can be absolutely amazing, or it can make the summer feel a little bit longer. So then we get to the three months that are just a little rough. July, August, and September. And I'll tell you why um, in particular I think they're rougher than just the fact that it's hot. Um, because we also have some humidity roll in during that time. Phoenix has a monsoon season, which technically starts in June and runs to September. Um, but the gist of it happens in sort of mid to late July and August. And so when it's that hot and humid, it's really sticky. You, you do wanna plan your vacation for that time. Um, but not to fear because there are uh, so many amazing places within driving distance of Phoenix, which is another video you'll have to check out. Um, lots of easy places to get to, to go to, just to escape the heat even for the weekend. The monsoon season, as I mentioned, which is technically the rainy season, more amounts to the windy season, in my opinion. So we have these storms called haboobs, and a haboob is basically a wall of wind that is moving a ton of dust across the valley. 
and they're really incredible to witness. If you've seen any pictures of them, it's almost unbelievable when you see it from up above. When you're in it, it really just feels like kind of a good old fashioned thunderstorm. The wind's whipping, you get a little bit of rain, um, it get, the skies get darker. So the one thing that I will caution with the haboob is, and that I have learned, is that if you are driving during a haboob, the visibility is minimal. And the protocol for driving in a haboob is to pull off to the side of the road to not turn on your hazards and not turn on your headlights and take your foot off the brake so that there are no lights being emitted from your car. So a little haboob 101 there. Now, when it comes to the rainy season or rain in general in Phoenix, the grand whopping total is about nine inches. So it's not a lot of rain to fall, and when it does, it looks like an absolute flash flood around here. It's one of those things that just catches you by surprise if you're not from here. It would seem like all the rain that would fall would just be immediately sucked into the very, very dry ground, but it doesn't work that way. It absolutely cascades off every hard surface, including what looks like dirt or sand or rocks, and causes just craziness on the interstates and everywhere else. One of the things that happens in the three very hot months is that the temperatures rarely creep below 100 and hover in that 105 to 110 range and then eke into the 115s periodically. So it's definitely hot. But what also happens is that you begin to acclimate. After your first year here, you will have a completely different temperature sense in your body. You will take a sweater to every restaurant you go to because they're all freezing and you will start to feel cold when you have those 75 degree mornings. You know, they're so chilly. Um, but the other thing that you'll really notice is if you go back to your home, wherever that is, which is probably cooler than here, um, it's going to feel cold and when they come to visit you, they are going to wear shorts all the time, flip-flops all the time, and no matter what time of year it is, they will be in the pool thinking it feels amazing. Um, which brings me to another topic of pools, pool maintenance, pool equipment. Check out my next video. The swimming season here really is in those hottest of months, so starting in June through September, but the perfect weather months, October through um, May, you, you pretty much need a pool heater in order to be able to swim during those months. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any specific questions, leave them below in the comments. I will get back to you. Check out my video on pool equipment and maintenance, and we'll talk to you soon.